Hey there. Uh, like you said, my name is Leland McFarland. My, uh, uh, the site that I work for is Small Business Trends. Uh, I'm the CTO. Um, and uh, one of the cool things that I kind of created um, and maybe you can uh, use to uh, the, the idea for two um, is a client dashboard for um, um, for for our sponsors to be able to uh, uh, be able to uh, access the data performing to their their sponsorships at any time. Um, and this came out because of the pain point of you know that one client that's just okay. I need to have all this data every week, and the data takes two hours to kind of culminate together in a spreadsheet and then at the end of the day they just drop you because you've budgets or anything like that so what i did was i i spent just a little time a couple of weeks um kind of uh mainly for sponsored content but i also did our kind of in-house ads um and then later on uh, lead generation and put it all in one place gave them a login to where they can access um, information based off of uh, Google Analytics data, um, share data, uh, everything pulled in together one place. And out of it, they loved it. I mean, it let made less work for, for me. Uh, it kind of uh, gave um, the appearance of something that uh, was a little premium. It made us a little bit you know that that uh, appearance that we're we're not this smaller site that we're um, kind of stepping up into a bigger player. Um, this is something that I would say you know, uh, and unfortunately, it's not something that I just pulled off of the shelf. Um, so finding a developer uh, that can um, um, kind of pull your data—that's something that's unique to your site—is um, a great way to kind of like. Put a really good foot forward for um, for your sponsors and um, give them something really nice and premium. Is this, is this for sponsored posts? Or yeah, this one in particular is uh, data for a sponsored post, and so up here I have like page view data, and I pulled all of this information automatically through Google Analytics uh, API, and so. Uh, except for the social media data. We have like gender, country, age, they can pull all of that data, set a date time, and then it'll pull it through the API. Um, the social media data is something that I kind of created myself um, through a JavaScript program called Share. Yeah, there's quite a few R's in there. Um, and then I had to kind of hack it and modify it so that um, the information was pushed up into the uh, um, server and then I could store it. And then when it came time for them to access it, it's over there. Um, yeah, so social media statistics break down into a pie chart. And so um, that's kind of how I was able to uh, um, pull out that data. Unfortunately, it's just so unique to my site and it's a hacking of this script. It's a hacking of that script. I, I don't have anything that I could actually put out because it just wouldn't necessarily work for uh, anyone else. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, I mean, it's, but um, I, I'm sure, you know, you can find a developer online and just say, hey, I, I saw this guy, he kind of created a dashboard. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Leland. Up next, so we have uh, someone that joined our roundtables yesterday that had a lot of really interesting insights on um, a lot of different aspects of a business that's doing more than just publishing. Uh, Roxana from Yardi. Hi, everyone. Um, I decided to talk to you about something that we learned um, the hard way within the last three or four years, and that is how do you make the right decision to move into one direction or another? How do you choose a partner? How do you choose um, to add more ad slots on your pages? How do you choose all that? And <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. You don't have the right answer until you try it. Um, we've been into, we're, we're very focused on data. So we 
look at the numbers, we make projections, we uh, make calculations, we see the potential in a partnership. But then what we found out was that it's never just that. It's show, the numbers only show potential. They never show the real situation unless you actually put it on the website, test it on a small piece of the website, test it uh, in certain conditions, and then you get a picture of how it could actually work out on the long run. But then what if the numbers are not so good? What if you say, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to try with this partner. The numbers are low, we don't want this. Try it again in a year. We were so pleasantly surprised to try the same, par same partnership a year later, and the numbers were absolutely amazing. Um, we would do that again. And of course, there's a challenge about resources. We, al we only invest a little bit in tests, but then we know that we have like the really, really relevant data, the data that is specific to our business, to our moment, to the little tweaks that we have on a website. Um, we study the competition a lot and we see a widget on a comp competitor's website and we say, okay, that should work on our website. But contextually, it's never the same. You can never have all the variables. So the only way you will know is if you test on your own website under your conditions with your resources and the best lessons we've ever learned were through tests they teach you everything from what it takes in terms of execution what it takes in terms of resources spent what it takes in terms of a toll on your website from site performance to um, conversion uh, optimization and so on. And what I want to leave you with is that the best win after all these tests and after doing tests is you get the courage to test even more. You get the courage to test bigger things and you get the courage to negotiate contracts and you get the courage to negotiate three months of testing before I sign up for a year with somebody. And that was a real win for us. And I think we're, we're still doing that and we'll still be doing that for years. Um, we wouldn't have gotten the courage unless we had, would have tried like a lot and for years. Thank you. If you have any questions. It's Point Two Homes. It's part of Yardi Systems. We're in the real estate industry. No, 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 testing, testing, testing everything. Yeah, just gave us the courage to test even more or to negotiate. That's what I was saying, because you always sign a contract and everybody wants a one year, one year long contract. But then you get the courage to say, no, I want two months and then we'll talk. I need, I need my own numbers before I decide to do this for a year. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll mention really quickly too. I see a lot of people with uh, phones out, and I usually mention this at the beginning. Um, but we will make all the slides, the master deck, available to everybody immediately following this, as well as all the the videos and um, and some of the still images and stuff like that. Usually, I have the presentation to everybody within like 24 hours, um, but the videos um, usually a couple weeks. It just kind of depends on the turnaround of the team. But we'll make it available to everybody that's uh, that's in this room. Um, up next. Um, I'm goal, goals are for losers. Um, I had a feeling that might be Dave's. <laughs> Please welcome Dave from Mac Observer. Thanks. Sweet. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, how many of us want to double our traffic for our websites? Right. How many of us want to double our revenue? Sure. How many of us want to stop when we've done that? Right. This, yeah, you just, that's it. Double and then you're done. I'm out. Pull the ripcord, good to go, off to Aruba with this guy. All right, well, that's cool, but you don't want to stop, right? This is why goals are for losers. And I wish somebody had told me this lesson more than like two years ago. I wish somebody had told me this lesson 20 years ago. You know, here, what's happening in this picture, right? The goal is scored. The team that just won the goal stops doing what they're doing. They reset back to zero and then they have to figure out how to do it all over again. Who's more motivated here? That guy, right? He's like, I'm not letting this happen again. 
you need momentum, right? Momentum is the key to moving everything forward. You don't want to stop just because you've hit your goal. You want to keep moving no matter what. And the way that you do that is you build a system, right? Because at this point, once you've got your system going, everything keeps working. Your goals simply become the byproduct of your system. They're your litmus test. Is the system working? And what you can do is you can pat yourself on the back and say the system's working. You need to train your brain to do that because if you train your brain to be really excited about goals, you will stop and celebrate when you hit a goal. Do not do that. We changed the way we did our sales in-house about a year and a half ago, and we got rid of goals and we focused entirely on systems. All we do, we know, okay, we need to make this many calls a day. We need to send out this many emails. We need to have this much in the pipeline. We need to have these things happening. And without even thinking about it, we doubled our revenue. We stopped thinking about where we wanted to be. And we started thinking about how are we gonna get there and just break it down into the little things that you do every day. And then these goals just happen. But you don't stop. And, the, you know, going back to the first picture, if that team's any good, the team that just scored the goal, the goal for them is a byproduct too, right? Their coaching system is just, okay, yep, we did all the things we were supposed to do. And sure, we got the goal. That's great. But, you know, we didn't really do it all perfectly. We can do better. We can tweak this. We can tweak that. I recommend, I changed one thing. Two weeks is an awesome period of time for me because it's, it's like this permanent thing that seems temporary. Whenever we hit a sales goal, I wait two weeks to celebrate it. We, we schedule it. It's like, oh, okay, you know, we hit, we hit some magic number that means something because it's divisible by 10 in a strange way that we humans like. Awesome. Uh, lit, we're going to have a party in two weeks. It doesn't take two weeks to organize a party. What happens in two weeks is you start working the system again. And by the time you have the party, everybody's already focused on the next thing that they're doing because it's just happening. And you're like, yeah, cool. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we hit that thing and it divides by 10. But wait, where are we going now? Goals are for losers. Systems are for winners. Wish somebody had told me that a long time. Thanks for having me. You're, you're right, Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give up on the magic. I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> I literally watched like three people like, nah, that, that guy needs to just give up on magic. <laughs> All right. Our last one of these today. Um, Cody from Task and Purpose, who also, again, was on our round table yesterday. I'm actually really interested to hear this one. So, Thank you. Thanks. OK, so I am Cody from Task and Purpose. I'm the head of revenue for, um, for our site. We are a digital publication that delivers breaking news and lifestyle content to the military veteran demographic. Um, I actually regret having to follow Dave, so thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so Task and Purpose was created by veterans for veterans, and because of that, and so we have about 70% um, of our staff as veterans, um, because of that we have this credibility in the marketplace, and that drives 100% organic traffic and increased brand loyalty. So, um, and this is a summary of our services for uh, direct clients, but um, the majority of our revenue comes from direct campaigns. Um, something that I wanted to chat about today that I mentioned at the roundtables last night um, is that we have sort of delved into this hybrid agency versus publisher relationship with clients. Because of our vertical, we work a lot with um, very small clients who are not often technically savvy. And we're delving not only into just branded content campaigns, but also um, DR and conversion driving campaigns. And so 
the amount of times that I've executed a campaign where we have done all the work on our end and the client is not satisfied with the results because they weren't successfully set up on their end to track conversions is um, embarrassing. <laughs> the amount of, of campaigns that I've um, that have ended in that way. And so essentially what we've done is we've added um, media consulting and market insights to our creative services. And so um, let's take J Dog, for example. Um, we ended up sitting with them for two hours on a weekly call every week um, to help their designers design their landing page and help them set up their uh, conversion funnel. And so this really is not only a way to um, maximize our revenue potential, because of course we're adding that to our, to diversify our offering um, as a publisher, but it's also setting up um, both parties for success. Thank you.